If you checked anything about complex systems, it's actually quite likely that you came across the idea that in complex systems, the whole is bigger than the sum of its parts. But what does it mean that the whole is bigger than the sum of its part? And is it actually really the case? Or maybe this is just a buzzword that we like to use and it doesn't really represent actually what we really mean with this. Or at least it doesn't really represent complex systems. So today we will try to analyze this concept more in depth, maybe to give it more complexity. And actually we will see in which cases actually it really makes sense to say that in complex systems the whole is bigger than the sum of its parts and in which cases instead this is actually not the case. Welcome everyone, my name is Dino Carpentras and this is Social Complexity, the channel where we dive deep into the complexity of the social world, which is a fancy way to just say social complexity. So if you're not new to the channel, you probably know that actually I transitioned from physics to computational social science. And actually when I was doing this transition, I had to face for the first time this idea that complex systems are more than the sum of their parts. And the first time that I encountered, actually, I was very excited. I was like, whoa, this is great. But then I paused a second and I realized that I didn't understand anything about it. And so I started wondering, like, what does it mean that a system or a whole is more than the sum of its parts? For example, if you check a flock of birds, which is usually used as an example for this concept of emergence, you will see that it's composed by a series of birds. And even if you sum up all these birds, what you end up is just a series of birds. So I don't know. And also, if you take it from the mathematical perspective, you have that the sum of two numbers has to be equal to the sum of their numbers. It, you cannot really have a situation in which you have that 2 plus 2 is different to 4, unless you're doing some fancy mathematical things like clockwork math, but this is not the case we're talking about today. And I think this is a big problem that we have when we actually try to explain science to other people because we want them to get excited, to get interested in what we're teaching. And so we try to use all these very fancy buzzword, we try to use counterintuitive examples, and this is great to get their attention. But the problem is that after a while, they end up with nothing. They end up only with a series of buzzword and counterintuitive examples. And I think this has a, an even bigger problem on a larger scale, because we try to explain science as if it was magic, but then we complain if people think that science is just another religion and that they can say that, for example, science and religion are pretty much the same thing. And since I totally disagree with this statement, I don't think science is anything like a religion, I think it's important to explain science in such a way that is scientific and is not kind of magic mystical thing that they have to trust us, the scientists, as we were the priests of this kind of new religion. So then why do we say that in complex systems the whole is more than the sum of their parts? Well, let's take an example and consider, for example, 100 people and you put these 100 people, each one on a desert island. So 100 people, 100 desert islands. So each one is going to behave in a specific way. So they will try to find their food and do everything they need to do to survive. But the interesting thing is when you put all these 100 people into the same island, because they're not going to behave anymore in the same way as they behaved the first time because now they interact to each other. And so they will try to do a series of things they will not have done if they were by themselves. For example, they might come with some kind of social structure. You will have a leader. You will have maybe some people who go and gather food. You will have hunters. But you can have all of these only because you have all these people together. So something important in complex systems is not just the components, for example, the people, but also their interaction, how they interact with each other. So if we really want to use this idea that the whole is bigger than the sum of their parts, we can say that in complex systems, you don't just have the single components, but they also have the interaction. 
So if you have two people in solitude, you have two people. If you put two people together, you will have two people plus the interaction. So eventually you can have this weird thing that one plus one equal three. But I personally hate it, so please don't use it. So let me try to explain it in a different way, which still try to keep all of this and doesn't need to use this idea of more than the sum of their parts. What we can say is that there are some systems, especially complex systems, that they are transformed when you actually put the components together. So again, a bunch of people in solitude will behave in a certain way. But when you take all these people and you put them together, you will have the formation of a society that you didn't have when you have a bunch of people in solitude. So instead of saying more than the sum of their parts, which evoke very confusing images with mathematical terminology, I would say that they are just different. When you will have the aggregation of all the components, you will have that these components will start behaving differently. And so you have an entire new system. And this is what gives you the phenomenon of emergence because now they behave in a specific way, which give rise to an entire new system. Now, is it true that this happens only in complex systems and we don't have anything like this in the more classical sciences? Not really. So if you think about it, just take an example of chemistry, you have that water is not behaving just like hydrogen and oxygen. Or if you take something like a gas in a completely hermetic box, you have that it's composed of a ton of particles which are all interacting because they are actually hitting each other. And just this is able to give you the emergence of macroscopic phenomena like temperature and pressure. Doesn't mean that complex systems are a fraud, they're just like classical science and nothing more. Well, I don't think so. I think what makes complex systems special is really the fact that they have a ton of interaction and interactions are actually quite complex. And really, like the interactions can completely transform the overall phenomena. Again, a society is not just a bunch of people doing their stuff in solitude, but it's due to the interaction. And so all of this actually generates what we call a society. So should we keep saying that complex systems are more than the sum of their parts, blah, blah, blah? I don't know, I don't really have an answer for this. Because yes, I agree that it's important actually to bring people to science, to try to get people motivated to science. But again, I think also this might be very counterproductive because we bring them to science, but we don't deliver science, man. So yeah, let me know in the comments if I missed anything important or if you have another perspective on this. If you want more video on this, make sure to check out the channel. So yeah, do your homework, write up your papers, and remember to embrace the beauty of complexity.